Hello everyone and welcome, it's the World Karting Association AMAX Racing Esports Series live on Apex Racing TV. We are here in beautiful Charlotte Motor Speedway for this first round of the season. Welcome on board to everyone who's watching us and a very warm welcome to Eric Brennan making his Apex Racing TV debut and he will be joining me tonight in this first round of this championship. Hello, Eric. How you doing, Marco? And I will say, I will shamefully admit, this is actually my iRacing commentary debut as well. So we're going to try to get through this thing together. But we've been keeping an eye on what's been happening in practice thus far. And as we mentioned, this is the first ever World Karting Association AMAX Racing Esports League event. And as we've seen all across the globe, many racing series electing to go this route to kind of fill that competitive desire that all these drivers, team members, and young racers seem to have to help us get through such a trying time. Uh, many of these racers were in fact slated to race at the Charlotte Motor Speedway uh, just in a couple of weeks time, but due to circumstances, the schedules kind of been shuffled around and all the leaders at the World Karting Association, along with a number of very supportive sponsors have stepped up and there are prizes aplenty but of course, Marco, they're going to be racing for more than just prize, but also pride. This is the first opportunity that these drivers have had, some of which since December of last year, to compete against one another. And they'll be doing so in the Skip Barber Formula 2000 car here on the iRacing platform. And we're kicking things off here at the virtual Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval. That will be our first race of five. A lot to look forward to. Uh, I'm excited to get ready to go. And in fact, we'll talk in just a couple of moments about what these drivers will be racing for, not just here tonight, not just throughout all five races of the campaign, but there are some really neat championship prizes to be given out as well. We have a lot to look forward to as we continue to watch practice take place for about 40 competitors, just shy of 40. We've seen clock in some lap times thus far. It's going to be a great night. I saw very quickly before the, the start of the broadcast, uh, uh, not only prizes for uh, the championship overall, but also prizes uh, are going to be, you know, uh, some squeaky pedals, my sim setup that really need a bit of fixing, and you cannot just go out and get some WD-40 right now, especially here in Italy, like, you know, uh, it's not like one of those uh, necessities uh, that you can uh, <laughs> ju justify your uh, trip. Uh, that is courtesy of Louis PNR, who will tell you a little bit more about them in just a short while, but they will be our poll sponsor when we get down to qualifying time in just about five minutes or so. And Marco, as you mentioned, I mean, yeah, we'll, we haven't even gotten to the championship prizes that are up for grabs yet, but as you mentioned, WD-40 and $25 to the winner of tonight's first AMAX Racing WK Esports Series event presented by Summit Racing Equipment. We also have a couple of chains up for grabs for the runner-up, whether it be a 219 or a 35 chain for their race cards. And as you mentioned, our third place driver who will round out the podium in tonight's event will go home with spark plugs, again, courtesy of all of our sponsors. And late in the going, Summit Racing Equipment stepped it up themselves as well. They're actually going to be giving out $25 of promotional credit to Summit Racing, and that's going to be for the top three in all five races. I mean, these drivers have a lot to race for. And of course, as we mentioned, the prizes do in fact sound exciting, but you can bet that those egos have been desperately looking for an opportunity to go back out there and get in competition. And we are a few moments away from seeing that happen with a number of drivers who, some of which don't always compete against one another. In fact, if you're new to karting or the World Karting Association as a whole, there are a number of different classes. Some of them are broken up by age. Some of them are broken up by what type of cart or motor you would run. Well, in this case, we've got masters who are competing with us. We have young drivers as young as about seven or eight years old that are all going to be competing on the same platform. And we even got a couple of media members who threw their name into the hat as well. You'll see David Cole's name out there in just a short while. I saw him on the entry blank, and we'll see how he fares if he's able to hop on in here and race with some of these young and up-and-coming drivers. There's a lot to keep tabs on throughout the night. I'm seeing uh, some uh, beautiful liveries to begin with, as we see a little bit of collisions here uh, in the in the chicane. And unsurprisingly, the leader of this free practice session is uh, is Nick Snell, and he is sporting uh, a Mercedes F1 livery. So no surprises. He's uh, he's very fast, as he's leading the way in front of Bryce Mesberger in second, only 0.062 behind 
uh, the leader and then Alpha Test second back here is the 48 of James Overbeck as he is uh, uh, recovering from a uh, spin so uh, you have been away from a racing for a bit Eric so you might be a bit surprised to see uh, that these cars uh, have a new tendency and that tendency is called the new damage model to explode when there's contact you will see bits and pieces and wheels uh, they will fly away it's uh, all very very spectacular uh, if not uh, of course uh, on our side on the uh, receiving side as uh, a broadcaster side a bit maybe delayed so it will not be uh, strange to see maybe a wheel fly and then reappear on that car a few seconds later because of the way the latency works and stuff but uh, certainly a big change from a racing's uh, you know very very strange damage model that they had uh, in in the past it's been fun to watch the technology kind of take over the iRacing world, especially over the last few weeks when it got thrown back into uh, a state in which, well, I say back into a state where it's really never been before. I mean, this is now a sole source of entertainment for a lot of race fans, myself included, you know, where we used to spend the weekends, you know, throwing on the television and trying to catch whatever type of motor racing event there would be. And right now, this is all that we have, and it's been rather entertaining. And you mentioned the new and improved damage model. Marco, I don't know about you, but we'll talk a little bit about track selection as to why we are running the venues in which we are, one of which with Charlotte being that, well, we competed on this very Roval last season. And as a matter of fact, the Charlotte Motor Speedway dove in with both feet for 2020, and they actually built a newly purposed cart track inside of the Oval Turns 3 and 4 for a number of these competitors to race on for the next two scheduled Manufacturers Cup Series events. But with that in mind, we wanted the racers to feel at home, so we chose the Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval as the first race of this WK AMAX Racing Esports Series. Well, with that, I don't know if we've ever seen, besides Joseph Newgarden running a few practice laps last fall, I don't know if we've ever seen an open wheel event take place on the road course at Charlotte. I'm intrigued, and that new damage model may get a bit of a workout if practice is any indication thus far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And such a nice track, and uh, I racing. Uh stepping up to the plate reasonably quick for their standards uh, when uh, this track was uh, uh, basically updated they actually went to scan this track i think four times because every time they scanned it uh, the uh, track owners uh, came in with different ideas for the layout and they also were kind enough to scan again the chicane which uh, has been updated of course very very recently so i think we're using the new chicane uh, the latest version of the chicane, which is a bit more, uh, uh, let's say, forgiving, even though I'm going to miss the, uh, you know, it, it was a pretty risky chicane. <laughs> We've seen some uh, <laughs> massive wrecks, uh, uh, both in real life and in iRacing. Now a little bit more forgiving, uh, even though those curbs, those, those startle curbs, uh, uh, I can tell you from experience, these skip barbers don't like them. And judging by what we've seen so far as we just enter the qualifying session where we will see who will grab the first Louis PNR Italian Market and Delhi Quick Time Award. And again, that is $25 cash to kickstart this AMAX Racing Esports League presented by the World Karting Association along with our partners at Summit Racing Equipment. These cars are sliding around a lot. And it doesn't appear to matter whether they are going through that bus stop chicane you were talking about, Marco, on the back straightaway, or even through the small elevation changes in the opening few corners of this road course. We've seen a lot of drivers overcook it early, just coming off the pit lane to try to get up to speed to see what kind of qualifying lap they can lay down. And we are going to see how this five-minute session will fare with a very healthy field of cars coming down to officially kick off qualifying. Yes, and of course, one thing that needs to be said, and it's going to come into play, as I love to see these guys slide here, this entire first section is also super narrow, and therefore the drivers will need to be super careful at the end of the, of the race, because there is not a lot of space to go if you want to avoid uh, any kind of, uh, of damage, uh, which again, these cars are very susceptible to, especially now that you can you know, lose wheels, uh, bend suspensions, uh, uh, and you know, aer aerodynamics not really important in this car, this is a mechanical grip kind of car, but still you want to have that nose cone and that rear wing if possible attached to your machine, so uh, very very easy to get uh, some, uh, some damage there, as we are waiting for the first few lap times to come in, uh, we are still uh, without any valid times, 
but it's a, it's, a, it's a relatively long lap even for these cars and I think the first driver to set a valid lap time will be this guy Connor Zilich he is rounding the chicane and getting back on NASCAR 3 and 4 I have to say that that final chicane is also trickier than it seems from just looking at the track map you come there with such a massive head of speed and then you have to fight the car that wants to go because you're basically almost braking uh, sideways because you are turning left to prepare to turn right if that makes sense and it's very easy to get to make a mistake there and Snell goes actually fastest 132.977 starting to see a number of lap times come across the board you mentioned Snell being the quickest for the moment two tenths back in the running order Byron Daly who just last night picked himself up an iRacing win at a totally different discipline. He was running in a league race using what is the NASCAR Xfinity model car at the Talladega Super Speedway. But Daly, who was an accomplished kart racer, tries to balance that act as best as he can when he's not wrenching on the Cup Series cars, which is the full-time job for him. And he was very excited when he saw this opportunity pop up to see what he could do. Currently second fastest thus far. But again, we only are a couple of minutes in what is a scheduled five-minute session for the Louis PR Italian Market and Delhi qualifying session to see how they will roll off for what is scheduled to be a 20-lap or 30-minute timed event for our first race of the 2020 WK AMAX Racing Esports League presented by Summit Racing Equipment. We saw Ben Meyer skip the chicane. That was uh, his first lap gone. He will have another one. But it needs to be quick because since this is single car qualifying, well, the moment the clock hits five minutes, which is 30 seconds away, no matter where you are on the track, you are unceremoniously booted from it. And we will move straight away to a gridding procedure as that beautiful Mercedes livery number 17 goes back on the start finish line. Snell does not improve on his time and actually daily is jumped by Zilich in, in second place so daily up down to third Robidoux the Canadian jumps up to fourth and Tim Ass is sitting in 15th place and uh, fifth place sorry and as you can see five minutes on the clock and that is it for our qualifying and straight away oh we're going to have a rolling start it looks like which is very very nice Therefore, uh, if you want, Eric, you can guide us through the uh, starting grid for this race. Well, the surprising thing is it looked like almost half the field wasn't able to get their way in to complete a qualifying lap. So does that bode well for the race that we're about to see? Uh, might be a bit of a telltale sign. As you mentioned, Marco, first time we're going to give out the Louis PR Italian Market and Delhi Pole Award winner. And that is $25 to Nick Snell, who set the quick time in qualifying. Uh, one of the few drivers able to get a quick lap in. And Connor Zilish, who on the real world side captured a number of trophies. In fact, he was a late entry to this series as we came down to the wire to kick this race off. And he jumped right in to qualify in the second spot. Byron Daly, the aforementioned Cup Series engineer, who's enjoying his time off racing, qualified third. And Matthew Robideau is going to line up in the fourth spot in car number 33. Fifth is where you will find the number 39 of Tim Huss. And the sixth spot in car number 20 is going to be Bryce Merzberger. Austin Olds, who has a number of WKA wins to his credit in 2019, looking to start off his 2020 campaign, even in the iRacing world, would have been a success. He's going to line up car number 15, a number that was used by his grandfather back when he used to race in the seventh spot. And Daniel Sturgruby in car number 49 will start eighth. Ninth will take you back to Jason Pribel and rounding out your top 10, one of the few WK Masters to sign up for this AMAX Racing Esports League. And that is Hugh Templeman. And that takes you through the top 10. Position 11 for uh, Dean uh, Dybdahl in uh, the number nine car. And Ron Miller will uh, start in 12th position as we scroll below and to see Nikita Poneris in P13, uh, Danny Dijelski in 14th, and James Overbeck and uh, Caleb Grafarar in 16th place, uh, Logan Julien and Caden uh, Vanzil in uh, 17th and 18th, and uh, Cameron Reed in 19th, and Jackson Pearsall will be your top 20 as the cards are starting to roll. 
Well, Salisbury is going to take car number 77 off from 21st spot. 22nd is where he was slated to find Hunter Fox as the running order shuffles around just a good bit. Chad Clay was scheduled to start next. Justin Dittrich out, of, uh, Dittrich out of upstate New York, typically an official whenever he's not behind the wheel of his race car. Uh, now here in the iRacing Series, going to start back at about the 25th position or so. Only up the rest of the grid will be Zach Collins, Michael Costello, Nick Mitchell, and uh, Cooper Gall, Josh Spur, Kevin Williams in 30th, then uh, Christopher McKeithen, uh, Bain Bennett in uh, 32nd place, and Eric Graham, Cash Perkins, uh, Adam Maxwell in 35th place, Ben Meyer will be in 36th, Rodney Dowles Jr. in 37th, then uh, Cabron Christ and Carmine Caruso, fellow, well, Italian, I'd say. Uh, clearly name of Italian origin uh, we will be last and hopefully he will be able to make up some positions as the race goes along as we are getting into the oval section of the racetrack once again as the drivers are trying to warm up their tires the new tire model version 7 is on these cars and as you know these uh, tires will take a lot of time to get some heat into them so this warm-up lap very important but we have a problem now of course uh, eric that unlike real life uh, the guys will use the chicane for restarts uh, and therefore you need to be careful because the pace car will pull off coming out of an ascar 4 and then you have to take that chicane and with such a big number of cars uh, that is uh, usually a recipe for disaster hopefully everyone will use their head because uh, it can make for a pretty pretty bad accordion effect the moment they head into that chicane and then back into turn one it's going to be fun to watch especially after seeing how entertaining practice and qualifying was so with that we are getting set to go and and marco thank you to you thank you to your people at apex racing for helping make all this possible along with everybody at the world karting association megan old as well who did a lot of work to try to get some sponsorship behind all these and all of our partners of course we mentioned amax racing summit racing equipment uh grand products threw in some prizes as well we also have fast cart supply rev branding louis pnr italian market and there are so many more who stepped up to give these drivers something to race for as we are getting set to go green for the first World Karting Association AMAX Racing Esports League presented by Summit Racing Equipment. We're going to go 20 laps or 30 minutes, whichever comes first. It's going to be Nick Snell and Connor Zillich leading them down for the start. And Snell's going to get the jump. Zillish falling back to about the second spot. Looks as though the first half of the field got through that chicane, Marco, as they approach turn one for the first time. Yes, I saw a couple of guys three wide in the back, but apart from that, it looked like a relatively clean start. Of course, cold tires, so you have to be super careful. Oh, and we have a spinner there and a big hit in the wall for a couple of cars. As they try to get back into the proper racing line, they hit each other once again. As we move forward once again and we'll uh, uh, keep an eye on uh, on uh, the leaders as uh, Snell and Zidish have really pulled away from the rest of the pack. Yeah, Byron Daly was fighting hard for that second spot, got trapped up to the outside, might have slid a bit too far. Looks as though he's lost three, now maybe four spots. As they approach NASCAR turn one, they're going to be wide open here as they come through turn two and then approach four, that backstretch chicane at speed for the first time. Snell, though, already out to about a two-second lead as we watch the battle for second. Looks as though that's Robito who's going to try to defend on Merzberger. Oh. Check that. That's for third. We got one lock it up into the corner. Daly now clips the back end of that car, and everybody's able to keep it straight for the moment. I think Austin Olds is missing a rear wing. And also, the car behind him, Ron Miller, is missing his rear wing. They both got collected into that uh, mayhem at the, uh, and, at, at the chicane as we are heading into the end of the first lap. Look at... Oh! People very late on the brakes, you need to be super careful with these cold tires. Even after a lap, they are not fully warmed up. And you can see Overbeck and Haas, they both uh, wildly went deep there in the chicane. As behind them, the fight continues. People kicking up piece of the breeze. There is a orange car with a McLaren livery, I think. Uh, that is uh, 
missing it. yeah it's uh, it's uh, michael costello is missing important bits of his car as you can see from this camera shot but uh, oh and in front of him two cars collide and he goes through avoids some major damage but that car is going to be a handful for the rest of the race because he completely missing the front end of the car survival is going to be the name of the game for sure we are still seeing contact throughout the pack and there's more that's going to be costello who gets turned sideways to the right hander off into the grass he goes going to rejoin the rest of the pack going to lose a number of spots in the process and it looks as though even a lap and a half in the books we have seen so many drivers a number of which we thought would contend for a top spot or maybe even a podium run into trouble early in the going but so far nick snell the race leader no trouble for him just yet. Nearly three seconds, the advantage. Back to Zilish, who currently runs in that second spot. Overback goes around, needs to be careful when rejoining. Almost collects another competitor, gets passed by uh, everyone else. So you can see the gap two seconds uh, between first and second place, and then three seconds from second to third. The Canadian uh, Matthew Robido is uh, being put under big pressure by Byron Daly, let's jump on board with him and uh, see what we see as they are still fighting very, very hard against these core tires, this track. Of course, these are road tires, therefore, even at their best, uh, are not really uh, suited for, uh, for racing and uh, therefore they give the drivers uh, a limited amount of grip, which is of course intended because this is a, a, a car that's for learning mostly. And then, you know, coincidentally, it's also, I think, the best in iRacing as well. But uh, really a car to that you use to learn how to drive basically that's why it's so difficult to control this battle for third making their way around a back marker who had some trouble in the early going and many people watching may be wondering why the skip barber formula 2000 car the reason being is that for many of these kart racers as we know on the iRacing platform there isn't a kart car available just yet well, this is typically one of the natural progressions for some of these kart racers. As they would move on up their ladder, they would enter into some lower tier formula style car. And the Skip Barber Formula 2000 is a perfect example. And Marco, you just mentioned why. I mean, this is a good developmental entry, really small tire. They slip and slide around a lot. And we are about to see which driver could have the edge to take over that third spot as Daly's hunting up the outside. This is where we've seen a number of drivers overcook the corner coming to this chicane before the stripe. Daly's got the edge and he'll cement the third spot at the line. Great pass and I don't think he's going to be the only one to use that passing spot there. We see this other fight here. Beautiful, beautiful duel between McKeaton and Ponerys and I think he's going to be the 19 to keep the position for the time being as they head into turn one as we have a driver in the pits. It is Ron Miller as you can see, maybe the damage a bit too much as you can see, missing the rear wing and opting to go for a stop now the question do, do these guys have a fast repair the answer is yes sir. so he should be ready to go in a second more or less back on the racetrack as we cut back up towards one of the battles that we have going on it's Paneris and McKeithen and how about this for Christopher McKeithen one of the first drivers out to come down for a green flag in qualifying did not turn a lap time he is plus 20 five on the running order and now has moved up into that six spot trying to fend off Panaris as they approach NASCAR turn one again and McKeithen up to six trying to climb further forward up in the running order got a long way to go though to catch the front runner Nick Snell who continues to hold down the lead but Panaris isn't done yet up the back straight Panaris now diving to the inside. Oh. Got a car that got turned around in front of him, and Panaris climbs up the back tire. McKeithen and tags the wall. Big suspension damage. Look at the front left. He needs to pit straight away. Of course, very tough. There are many cars on the inside line. That car will be pulling to the left mightily. Let's see. He stays out, surprisingly enough. Gets passed by a bunch of cars. And now he needs to be super careful because that car is a handful with that big damage and now he will be tagged with a slowdown unfortunately for him as we have Mkitan and Haas now slipping and sliding and then we have behind them uh, I say a teammate to Haas in Dean uh, Digdal judging by delivery and a bit of argy bargy and hard into the wall goes Haas oh. unfortunately 
A little bit of RG Bargy indeed. And that was Huss who caught the wall on the exit of the right-handed corner and from a battling four position in the top 10 to now plummeting down the running order. A tough break for Huss as the leaders continue on. We drop back a little bit to Daniel Steingerby who is battling for a position with Bain Bennett. That's for just outside. In fact, that's for about the 18th spot. And Marco, we've seen a lot of trouble happen already early on, but we're also seeing a lot of drivers come down, make repairs as needed. And one of the reasons for that, as we talked about all the availability, is we see some of that damage there on Adam Maxwell's car. Struggling yeah. mightily there. With I the right front hanging off that machine. I thought that this was one of the cases of the damage then fixing itself, you know. Uh, because <laughs> That's it, why but, I was but, waiting. <laughs> but no, that, that, that car kept on. <laughs> and and, and, and if after like two or three seconds, uh, it doesn't come back to normal. That is a uh, real damage. And uh, you have to be careful because that nose cone uh, will be dislodged and then be kicked. Uh, and that can have damage to the other competitors coming behind you. Also can launch you in the air, I know, for experience. Uh, but yeah, I, I think he needs to pit. <laughs> Understatement of the century right there, I'm sorry about this. But uh, kudos to, to him because Adam, was, Adam Maxwell was able to do basically the entire lap on, on three wheels. So great job and now he should head for the pits to get some repairs because that car is not going anywhere unfortunately. And here he comes into pit road, our leader dealing with some lap traffic, as you can see. Nick Snell making a pass at the ins. Wow, there was a car that was spun there right in the middle of that chicane on the backstretch. Snell nearly got by, and that car continues to sit idle. Mm -hmm. He's bitched, unfortunately. Rodney Dowles Jr., I think the only option is either you get hit and dislodge from there, or you tow back to the pits, which is the more sensible idea. And he tows back and he will have to uh, endure the tow back time to the pits. Uh, usually takes around uh, a lap plus 30 seconds more or less uh, based on the place where we are racing. So of course a lot of time lost there. Uh, this is a beautiful lever for Christopher Mekita. And as he to attack, will Salisbury on the inside of the chicane? Can he make it stick? The answer is yes. And that's actually a great battle for what looks like about sixth on back as they fan out nearly three wide to the first corner. McKeithen able to run and hide away from that battle. Salisbury lost like two spots, it looked like, as Carmine Caruso and Dean Dibdahl also in that little oh. three-car tussle as we got one off into the wall. And that is Dibdahl who got wide and brushed the wall with the left side. And we saw that car step back. Out a little bit sideways looked as though he was able to gather it back in before making any major. first ever amax racing wk esports series win presented by our friends at summit racing equipment michael costello with some big issues that car is not looking good at all some fantastic heads up driving from nick snell not only the pace to put your car on pole and pull away from the lead but he's also showing great poise in uh, lapping other drivers and that is not necessarily the easiest thing to do and that's one of the things we're going to have to consider as we continue to watch this race unfold again scheduled to go 20 laps or 30 minutes uh judging by my watch we're about nearly 12 minutes in and snell is working what will be his eighth completed lap when he comes back to the line but with all these cars many of which having had problems already throughout the day uh, Snell's going to have to do all that is possible to make sure that he could avoid trouble throughout the duration of this race, despite having such a large lead over Connor Zilish in second and Byron Daly, who continues to ride third. Uh, Carmine Caruso, we were talking about him earlier for a second. He has now taken the crown of uh, biggest mover of the race, 31 spots. Remember, he started dead last uh, in, the, in, in the race, and now he's up to P8 and threatening to gain a bit more positions you see there's a bunch of cars in front of him including uh, mckeaton and overback with a lapped car in between and he is uh, lapping a bit faster than them therefore i think he could uh, reasonably catch them and maybe bring will salisbury with him to make a big big fight for uh, sixth seventh place uh, there or thereabouts so 
very good start for him and it's not easy of course so when you start from the back even if you are faster than the other drivers because again you have to avoid uh, carnage make a lot of overtakes i can tell you one thing if these guys keep taking that chicane these are the those front wings are not going to be on those cars uh, come the final lap of the race Marco looking at timing and scoring, waiting for it to update here. We saw Nick Snell running down the running order just a little bit. It looks so it corrected itself. Thought maybe the leader had a problem, and it has caught back up, and Snell does continue to hold down the fort. But as we've seen, that group that you were just referencing, involving McKeithen, Caruso, Salisbury, Fox, and company, navigating your way through traffic is no easy task. And considering how big this racetrack is, this is a pretty tight fight for position we have going on up here. Still well within the top 10. Yeah, I think the leader was having a little bit of connection issues. Therefore, uh, he was uh, jumping up and down our scoring tower. But so far, that is going to be his biggest enemy. As we see, Caruso move to the uh, apron to make the pass. Salisbury follows suit and that gets a fantastic run. But Got a big draft issue. up the back stretch. He, he was marked, yeah. he didn't force the issue. I see uh, all these guys come dangerously close to that left side wall. It almost reminds me of the first corner at Monaco when you, the idea line brings you very, very close to the outside wall there at Saint Devot Turn 1. And these guys are not shy about getting as close as possible uh, to that particular piece of track. In front of them, still the fight between Overbeck and McKeithen, as they bounce very, very hard on that uh, on that curb there, on that turtle curb. As we take a look from the back, and you can see almost every every car has got a little bit of damage on the nose. If you can see, maybe from this very dark livery of McKeithen back there, because of the way they are bouncing very, very hard on those uh, uh, turtle curbs, especially in the two chicanes. You enjoy watching the back end of these cars step out as they get back to power. I can guarantee that if any of these racers have taken some time either away from the sim or out of the race car, they are going to be feeling the effects of this one come tomorrow morning. A lot of slipping and sliding going on. And Marco, we've talked already about what is up for grabs as far as race prizes. Well, we haven't talked yet about the championship. And for some of our front runners or even some of the drivers who have worked so hard to pick up 10, 15, 20 plus positions, well, how about this? The eventual champion of this series, as we watch Salisbury trying to set up Caruso once again off two, is going to win an arrive and drive package for the upcoming Daytona Kart Week this coming December. And that is with a chassis and support, no motor provided. But all that is from AMAX Racing and Intrepid USA. And on top of that, you're going to get a free entry for the event from the World Karting Association plus $50 cash. So you could literally take your successes from this iRacing eSports League with the WKA and transfer it into a real-life in-race kart experience at Daytona. And again, that is regardless of age because we have series that start as young as about six, seven, eight years old, all the way up to our Masters, which you could race uh, as long as your body will let you, essentially. So there is a lot riding. And there are also prizes for second and third as well. And we'll get into that a little bit more. And uh, this is race number one of five. If you like what you see here, scheduled for next Monday, May 4th. That will be at the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. And that's going to be a lot of fun to watch <laughs> these Skip Barber cars get around there as well. As we have seen, Caruso just clipped that wall coming out of the chicane there. Uh, this might halt his, uh, his uh, progression just a bit. Uh, I don't know how much damage he has, but that front left uh, looks a bit uh, smashed. Uh, as we see Overbeck and McKeithen going side by side, you know, my only real success in a racing has been being able to run in the Ski Barber Oval World Cup a few years ago. And these things are a blast on Ovas. I know we are doing the road course, but uh, I mean, I would uh, absolutely vouch for an all oval series, especially the shorter ovals with this car <laughs> are amazing. Uh, but this is uh, as close as it comes, you know. Uh, and Daytona, of course, will provide even better, uh, you know, more, even more slipstreaming uh, opportunities, uh, uh, given that, of course, it's a, it's a bigger track. As uh, once again, you can see Caruso struggling now, as I was predicting, and Salisbury trying to get the best of him moving on the inside. By the way, I said, oh, I said participating in the 2K World Cup, eh? uh, over World Cup, not uh, doing any kind of great result. So, <laughs> but, you know, it was just... Uh, 
uh, you know, you were required to have a certain A rating to participate in, so <laughs> at least I, I had that uh, 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 to my name. And it was a very fun series uh, to, to race in. We did, of course, the smaller ovals, Gateway, uh, we did um, uh, Milwaukee, uh, so that those, those really suit this car very, very nicely. As uh, back to our leader, who's having a lonely race, but I don't think he's going to m uh, mind about that, as he's uh, absolutely cruising there at the front, whilst the Conor Zilich and Byron Daly are uh, dealing with some lap traffic. Uh, as, uh, bit of a misunderstanding there by Zilish and Daly made a mistake at the chicane and he's very very slow it looks though we position. may have a battle for second shaping up here and uh that's Daly trying to find a way around that lap car right there in the mix as well as they come up off the banking we've seen Zilish take that apron approach up to the final chicane at the left hander but Daly's gonna send it on the bottom oh. Zilish steps out sideways and he spins in front of the lap car it's Bryce uh, Mesberger, I think, and he's lost a, a bit of the nose cone. And so some serious problems for the for the 72, I think. Let, let's go back and I think we have a replay of what happened to him at the chicane. Yes, here we go, on board with him. Oh, just reeling in that lap card at the worst possible spot. Had to avoid and dart out left to avoid running into the back of that lap car, and then the rest of the lap just unraveled from there. Yeah, I thought he had some damage, but no, that was uh, just a mistake that he made at the final chicane because he was, uh, you know, uh, very, very focused on uh, staying in front of Daly, but uh, that forced him to take uh, an, a very, very aggressive stance, adding into this corner, locking the brakes, and then the car was sliding, nothing he could do there, and unfortunately, he collected uh, uh, Mesberger's car, which, uh, you know, was an innocent uh, by Sander and all that, even though, and I'm not saying that he should have done this or that, you know, maybe being a lapped car could have eased a bit, but it's very easy to say it from here. And, you know, when you are there racing, it's, uh, it's a completely different thing. Oh, Caruso goes around, uh, missing the front left. Uh, is that uh, a glitch or is it real? I think it's very, very real, unfortunately for him. Yeah, it looks though major damage to the left front of Caruso, who again was running up in the top 10 throughout most of this race. And as the laps continue to wind down, looks as though we are under about seven to go or so. He lost the wheel somewhere in the infield. Huh? My guess is that I'm trying to... Oh, oh dear. That was a big hit for Caruso. Let's find it again. Yeah, he clipped uh, the wall there. And that was all she wrote for his uh, front left as we go back live. As we have 20 minutes on the clock, 21 minutes as of this moment. And 14 laps currently by our race leader. I mean, we are on lap 14, so he will start his 15th lap next time we go through... The start finish line gap 12 seconds oh, i mean he's pushing so hard this nick snell doesn't like to uh, you know lift there and uh, you know it's uh sometimes as a driver i think that uh, you need to be careful when you go into management mode because sometimes when you do that uh, you lose concentration and uh, paradoxically mistakes become uh, easier to make if you know what i mean and up to this point, after we saw the misfortune for Connor Zilish while riding second, Byron Daly continues to hold down that second spot. And Nikita Panera was scored in that third spot just momentarily as we watch the timing and scoring order shuffle back around. But again, the laps are clicking away, and it looks as though that Nick Snell is trying to become the inaugural winner. And one thing we want to point out with this schedule from the WKA with their AMAX Racing Esports League presented by Summer Racing Equipment, one of the key notes here at Spring 2020 Edition, this could become something that becomes a little more regular for the series to get involved in. Who knows, Marco, as times progress and things move on maybe we will see an oval or two tagged on one of these eventually even though wk for the most part with road race and the manufacturers cup being known for their road races but the dirt series we at the charlotte motor speedway dirt track in just a few months time and again for more information they can head on over and visit worldcarding.com
so I, I am de definitely not, uh, you know, a, a driver, um, a kind of commentator. I enjoy my day at the karting track every once in a while, especially when we can get the uh, 125cc uh, kart done as uh, overback moves on the number. Uh, I mean, all has been going on all the race long without the rear wing. It goes to show how much mechanical grip is the prevailing force in these cars. Uh, but I'm seeing a lot of... Uh, karting style driving from these guys the way uh, they approach the, the corners and all this slipping and sliding uh, which you don't normally see in normal ski barber competition but i might be completely wrong but that's the impression i'm uh, i'm getting uh, by watching this race and it, it, in my opinion it's beautiful because you see these guys sliding and you say okay they are going to hit the wall and then they don't which if i ever tried it uh, it wouldn't end very well I think I'm right there with you. That's why we talk about the race cars and the set of driving of them, because I think, at least for my sake, I probably would have been out of this thing after the first few corners. But the same could not be said for some of our front runners. And you mentioned what a job by Austin Olds. I feel like since the drop of the green, that rear wing has been missing. And he's still, like he's got an egg underneath the throttle, just gingerly applying the power where needed, knowing that he's lacking some of that rear downforce in the back of that car. It's still in the fight for what would be a top five if he can get back up and around Overbeck for that fifth position. There he is, Austin Olds then. As in front of him, that, was that Overbeck or the lap car clip in the wall? I think it was, uh, it was Overbeck. I I believe that was Overbeck, who was trying to get around one of those lap cars. Not sure if that is Caruso, who was running up in the top 10 before the misfortune plagued that driver. Mm -hmm. And Overbeck gingerly grazed the wall with the right side, and that's going to allow Olds to close back up. I was taking an easier line, uh, more than easier, a safer line through that corner. He, he's been driving with his head. That's the reason why he's in sixth despite having a lot of damage and that's usually a winning formula you might not win every race with this uh, mentality but you're certainly going to score more points oh and the uh, point in case crash there at the front caruso clips uh, over back just got the back end of that they it almost ends in disaster but thankfully they both survive so once again goes to show how things can go sour in an instant around this place and goes to show once again the fantastic job that the leader has done and the leaders as a whole have done to hold on to their position until right now because uh, there's a lot of cars on track and a lot of overtakes to be made even when you are the leader and once again now over back and also into some more traffic and uh, overback is not shying away with these uh, uh, you know moves on lapped cars and they are uh, very risky, I have to say. Uh, sometimes it pays off, uh, but sometimes uh, it doesn't. Uh, he's been very, very lucky in this past couple of laps to get away with virtually no damage after brushing the wall first and then clipping Caruso's car at the final chicane just a few corners ago. And for Overbeck, he has to be wondering, what more do I have to do each and every time he's able to build a bit of a gap on Olds? Something seems to go awry, whether it be trying to navigate his way through a lap car, whether it be trying to find an avenue by another competitor, or a car spun in front of him, perhaps. And Olds, again, still running up in the top five, despite not having that rear wing as things sort back out. Now battling with Overbeck for that position as Nick Snell continues to click off the laps here, and they are going away quickly. Ominous plum of smoke in the pit. Someone uh, lost an engine. I think it was, uh, I think it was Bennett, if I am not mistaken. As they keep on, you see the different lines between overback and holds. And of course, holds, as you were saying, I mean, yes, mechanical grip is key with this car, but of course you, you'd like to have the help of the of the wings. So when you lose them, it's not like uh, they are just there for cosmetic reasons. They are there. They just don't do a lot, but. Uh, Still, uh, the, uh, not having them is uh, detrimental to your performance, uh, 100%. And of course, you can see also not only as a missing rear wing, but also the front end of his car is looking uh, a bit second hand there. And this is not going to help him uh, in any part of the track, because of course that, that broken front wing will slow him down on the on the back stretch. And of course, he is missing some downforce in the tricky infield section but once again 
the draft very prominent in this car and also closes back very very close to overback but once again he doesn't seem to like being too aggressive there so he doesn't push the envelope and I think you know the six all things considered he could be very 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 happy if he finishes in sixth or fifth as we have two laps to go right now Nick Snell just after this penultimate lap and this is the best battle on track. Continues to be the Overbeck and Olds, two drivers who you will hear a lot of in the next few years as they continue to work their way up the racing ranks with the World Karting Association. You see them both attacking those curbs back to the line with, as you mentioned, oh. Marco, just two laps to go. We have a massive surprise because Conor Zilich has crashed her with two laps to go. And there it is, down oh. to the turn one. Oh, he just ran a little bit wide on the exit of that corner, and he was still running up in the top five. So that is the second time that Zilish has been plagued with bad luck while running up towards the front of the pack. And this time, it might drop kick him way out of the top ten. Yeah, he had to uh, tow back to the pits, unfortunately for him. So this promotes everyone behind him up one spot, and this will become a fight for the podium between uh, Overbeck and uh, and Holz. Yeah, just that quickly, we have seen the podium shuffle up. So Snell still clear out in front, and he is going to be coming around. This is going to be the white flag for Nick Snell. One lap away from what has truly been a dominating performance, up by north of 16 seconds over second place runner Byron Daly. But as we just learned a lap ago with Connor Zilish, you got to keep it on the pavement and off the concrete to cement a win here at the virtual Charlotte Motor Speedway Road Bowl. And Snell is not slowing down. He just had the fastest lap of the race this last time by 131.76. As Overbeck defending from holes, also getting a bit more aggressive in this final lap. And, uh, two tenths of a second there in between these two drivers. And the gap uh, shrinks on the oval portion and uh, gets a bit bigger in the uh, in the infield section sideways Holtz. both of them you can see i also see a bit of damage on the front right of uh, of holes but maybe it was just the camera angle uh, where's the race leader heading for the final chicken the last or the penultimate risk of his race i have to say a couple of lap cars there in front but he should be well clear of them it's been a fantastic performance, this one from Nick Snell, and a, I'd say the perfect way to start the championship with pole position and victory. Coming through the last few corners, and the first ever World Karting Association AMAX Racing Esports League win presented by Summit Racing Equipment. It's going to go to Nick Snell, who leads wire to wire, and he'll capture not only that WD-40, not only the $25 cash, also the $25 credit from Summit Racing Equipment, but here's that battle for third coming up the final bank corner. He's going for Over back to... Sorry, Marco. Overbeck doing all he yeah, can yeah. to try and block. Olds coming up the outside. Two corners left to go. Oh, oh they touch. Olds is going to muscle his way through for the final spot on the podium. We have another fight, Fox and Salisbury. Side by side and heading to the final chicane. And no contact this time. And Fox gets it done. Salisbury will finish 6th, what a close finish there, congratulations to Byron Daly for uh, getting a fantastic 2nd place, certainly going to spark some controversy, but I like some, uh, you know, some uh, elbows out racing, and it's the final lap, so uh, well played, I, I, I think James will not agree with me, uh, as uh, Zilish is coming uh, around for, uh, in the end, uh, good damage limitation, despite having to tow back to the pits, he will finish in 8th, so he stops uh, the point uh, loss, you know, uh, to a certain extent. Finishing in the top 10, here he comes, but of course big disappointment. The podium was in his pocket up until a couple of laps ago, and uh, Logan Julien will finish in 9th. And who, who are we waiting for? Matthew Robido is also still racing, but uh, that's... 
check in with the leader as he will try to do some burnouts which are unfortunately not possible with this car <laughs> i mean yes you you can you can use some help with the grass but i've tried and tried and as you can see <laughs> you, you have to you be careful flip you can flip over. the car yeah <laughs> <laughs> my goodness what a way to kick this off again a five race scheduled series the WKA Max Racing Esports League presented by Summer Racing Equipment. We rattled off the prizes that Nick Snell's going home with. Uh, second place finisher, Byron Daly, getting that 219 or 35 chain for that second place finish. And Austin Olds unofficially muscling his way by James Overbeck, not only for a third place finish, but also for a pair of spark plugs, or I should say a set of spark plugs. So, uh, nevertheless, prizes are going to be given out for our top three finishers for all five races. And again, everybody vying for the series championship uh, prizes. Again, the champion getting the arrive and drive package for Daytona Kart Week. Uh, that's courtesy of AMAX Racing and Intrepid USA. Uh, also, free entry for that event from the WK and $50 cash. Second in the championship standings will get a WK Daytona Kart Week entry. Uh, that also courtesy of the World Karting Association and $30 cash. And the driver finishes third in the championship points. We'll get one set of Bridgestone tires provided by Grand Products and $20 cash as well. There is a lot on the line. And tonight was a fantastic night for Nick Snell. Not only did he grab the Louis PNR Italian Market Pole Award with $25 in the pocket, but also all the accolades that come with being the first and the only inaugural winner for the WK AMAX Racing Esports League presented by Summit. He had uh, Paul, he had victory, he led the entirety of the race, he set the fastest lap, so I mean, what more can you want from, uh, from a race, uh, I'd say race weekend, but uh, a, a, an evening of racing, uh, as uh, we are scrolling through the final results, and as you can see, uh, drivers are already getting ready for uh, a spectacular race in Daytona. I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, the world center of racing for a reason. And certainly it's going to be something because the infield section is a bit less technical than this one, especially with this car. So even though, you know, that braking area, I think after the, the kink could prove to be interesting, so to speak. But then, as we were saying, uh, Eric, uh, in the broadcast, uh, these guys are going to have massive amounts of straight line to uh, to to close the gap. So if you uh, maybe not that quick in the in the infield, but you can stay close, then you're going to 100% have a chance to go for the move. And I'm already doing uh, you know a a bet with you. Uh, I I think that. Uh, if there is a fight between two drivers and these drivers are first and second, the driver who's second coming out of the bus stop chicane is going to win the race. No one will want to be first in that final lap. I'm going to have to agree with you, especially after what we saw here at the virtual Charlotte Motor Speedway Roval. It looked as though that draft was so effective. It's what allowed Austin Olds unofficially grab that third spot in that final run to the last chicane. And as you mentioned, there is no chicane once you come out of that back straightaway bus stop at Daytona. You are pretty much on the gas till you approach turn one. And uh, that final lap is definitely going to be interesting uh, once we get down to it, as we will be prepared now for race number two which, as we mentioned, will be on May 4th. That will be next Monday night, one week from tonight, at the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. Uh, we'll have more prizes up for grabs for our podium finishers, as this will take us all the way through. We'll, after that, we'll be at Road America on May 11th, Sebring International Raceway May 18th, and we will cap things off at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway May 25th. We'll see you will grab the first ever WK AMAX Racing Esports League Championship, and hopefully by then, Marco... Uh, all these young drivers, and uh, when I say young drivers, we got some masters and some veterans in there as well. Uh, hopefully the world will be right again, and they'll be set to go back racing with their next scheduled event actually at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, June 26th and 28th. And again, for more information, visit worldcarding.com. It has been a great event. I cannot wait to uh, join you once again for the Daytona round. Uh, once again, thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot to Eric Brennan for uh, sharing the commentary box with me. Uh, and uh, until next time, from everyone here at Apex Racing TV, I wish you, as per usual, good night and happy racing.